Now there are five types of spondylolisthesis. I have mentioned the types here. Isthmic or the lytic type, the most common. The second one is the dysplastic type. The third one is the traumatic type. The fourth one is the degenerative type. And the fifth one is the pathological type. We'll discuss about all these five types. First of all, we will talk about isthmic or lytic type. First thing that I want all of you to remember is that this is a classical congenital type. It has not acquired. It's already there um, right since birth. Okay. Now, what is there right since birth? You have to understand. This is the most common type. That's okay. But what is there since birth? Let me tell you. There is a congenitally weak there is a congenitally weak pars interarticularis. There is a congenitally weak pars interarticularis. It's a congenital weakness. There's a the, the person is born with a defective pars interarticularis. Now this person manages a good life till a good time. But what happens, you know, when you turn 18, you are skeletally mature, then you start playing. I mean, of course, you've been playing previously also. But at one point of time, you know, you enter into a life, maybe because of studies, because of office, because of job, you're constantly sitting. Maybe, you know, your body weight is gained. Your bones are not that strong. So at one point of time, due to repeated stress, there is a fatigue fracture due to repeated stress there is a fatigue fracture of the pars and that is the reason for the slip <clears throat> i get to see these patients often so they are 20 21 22 year old young males even females uh, you know they are in a college engineering medical whatever normal large college and suddenly you know one day they have a lot of backache then they take some abc medicine but still they manage with that then probably a couple of weeks later they again develop that deep dull aching pain which is persistent and one day they say sir it's not possible i'm not able to cope up with this you know i have to ensure that uh, i had to ensure that i see an orthopedic surgeon and then they come to us and when they come to us then we get an x-ray done in which we diagnose that they had a congenitally weak pars now because of the repeated stress there's a fatigue fracture of the pars which is responsible for the slip okay now after isthmic type the second one is a dysplastic type now when we talk about the dysplastic type i'll give you an example here way back in 2017 Again, it was a Saturday. I was taking a lecture in one of the you know, cities outside Delhi. So, Saturday, Sunday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday was a lecture. So, I got a call from you know, somebody who's known to me. He said, sir, uh, my daughter, she's around 16 years and, you know, she went to the washroom. But suddenly, when she was about to get up from the commode, she had an excruciating backache to an extent that she could not even walk up to the door and she kind of you know lied down on the floor and she started yelling and somehow we opened the door we took her out we took to this hospital we got an mri done and the doctor is saying that we will operate and there is a disc prolapse i said 16 year old disc prolapse little you know uh, i mean we don't expect that uh, disc prolapse uh, can happen in 16 to 17 year old patients there is something missing. Uh, have you got an X-ray done? He said, no, no, sir, MRI is already done. I said, okay, fine, MRI is done. But X-ray is also very important at particular age. We might not, in MRI, we can see spinal cord, we can see nerve roots, we can see disc, we can see, of course, we can see bone, but not that quality of a bone that I can see on an X-ray. So I said, we should get an X-ray done. He said, uh, I have spoken to the, uh, an hour later, he said, I have spoken to the orthopedic surgeon here. He said, nothing doing. Tomorrow is Sunday and I've already booked the operation theater and we'll be doing the disc removal. I said, see, the age is not very suitable. And plus the presentation is also not very suitable. It seems there is some acute condition that has happened. We need to see. Somehow, just postpone the surgery to Monday morning and I'm coming tomorrow after Sunday. My lecture will be over. Uh, in the night, I'll fly back to Delhi. So Sunday night, I landed in Delhi at around 
you know, 10 30 10 40 i was in the hospital i got an x-ray done that girl had a dysplastic lysthesis i'll tell you what the dysplastic lysthesis means i'm sure you guys are aware of the sacrum bone I'm sure you guys are aware of something which is called as the S1 and I'm sure you guys know that is called sacral promontory and I'm sure you guys are aware that you know these are the uh, diff these are the basically the sacral ala we call them as sacral ala uh, we call them as sacral wings now this the 16 year old girl was born with defective articular facets she was born, born with defective articular facets, particularly the superior ones of the S1. She was born with this. So technically, the vertebral body, which was supposed to make a joint with that, was basically L5. But she had defective superior articular processes of uh, S1. Because of which, she had a defect in pars interarticularis she had a defect in pars interarticularis i'm not saying it was weak i'm saying it was deformed you have to understand the uh, the difference between the two things i'm not saying that it was weak congenitally weak it was deformed there was a deformity right since the birth and again this is also congenital because the deformity in the bony part of superior articular processes of s1 is since birth Okay, now what happens is that when you touch puberty, I'm sure you guys are aware of it. When you touch puberty, there's a rapid surge. So because of the rapid growth surge, because of the rapid growth surge, L5, the vertebral body of L5, it expands a lot. But can S1 expand? No, because S1 is already defective. So there is a, because of the rapid growth surge, L5 will continue to grow, S1 won't grow. So there will be L5, S1 mismatch. And that is the reason behind something that is what is called as lysthetic crisis. That is what is called a lysthetic crisis. It is a classical crisis. When I say crisis, what does that mean? That it is an acute condition. What does that mean? That it is an acute condition which is characterized by severe, 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 severe pain. <clears throat> so it's a classical crisis that happens. Severe pain, high density pain. There will be rigidity in the entire paraspinal muscles. There will be, you know, tenderness and there will be acute pain and the person won't be able to walk, stand, do anything. So this is, a, this is a highly emergency situation. The third type after all these is isthmic and dysplastic. The third type is the traumatic type. I give you a very simple concept of it. I could see one student had asked me what is pars interarticularis. But you have to understand that this is a vertebral body. This is a vertebral body. Okay. Now there is a superior articular process there is an inferior articular process and then you go like this with the spinous process so similarly you have a vertebral body you have it like this 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 and you have it like this so but if you see this joint this is a joint between the superior articular process of the inferior body i'm sure can you see that and the inferior articular process of the superior body so this joint here this this joining here is what is called as pars interarticularis or also called as facet joint right? now i'll tell you a classical point that break in this is called spondylolisthesis if it is congenitally weak and because of stress fracture it breaks off we call it isthmic type if it is deformed particularly between l5 and s1 we call it traumatic now apart from this two these two things there are other reasons for stability also lamina pedicle spinous process there are other reasons of stability also and if they get fractured if they get fractured fracture of any part of posterior column of spine fracture of any part of posterior column of spine except pars interarticularis except 
pars interarticularis that will be called as the traumatic type a lady uh, was sitting on the back side of a bike the bike was being driven by his by her young son he was hardly 2021 20, he bought a new bike he was excited he called his mom ki mummy aaiye aapko bike pe ghuma ke lata hu now the mom is sitting there's a speed breaker the bike jumps the boy jumps the lady jumps the bike and the boy they go ahead the lady slips and falls there and she fell down on her back she had a fracture of the lamina or a transverse process or a pedicle or a spinous process and that is the reason why the two vertebrae got slipped so that is what is called as a traumatic type you understand my point after traumatic the next one we have the degenerative type which is a very very important one now when we talk about the degenerative type of lysthesis listen to me very very carefully i'm sure you guys are aware of the word degeneration you know with age there are certain degenerative things that happen to all of us our hairs you know they become white and bones become weak and you know there that that's a part of senility that's a part of aging so similarly if you remember in one of the demo lectures that i took initially i talked about i talked about osteoarthritis i talked about degenerative arthritis so if we remember that topic we remember that osteoarthritis is something that basically happens in weight bearing joints knee is a weight bearing joint hip is a weight bearing joint spine is a weight bearing joint so osteoarthritis of spine is common with senility with senescence with aging and do you have this as a joint do you have this pars interarticularis as a joint yes can this process of arthritis see you your spine has to bear your body weight so can you imagine that you know the body weight which is coming on to this particular joint with senescence might lead to degeneration of this joint yes and if there will be degeneration of this joint just imagine this joint will have osteoarthritis or degenerative arthritis yes if you remember some part of osteoarthritis in the x ray i taught you that there are certain things which are called osteophytes there are certain things which is called subchondral sclerosis osteoarthritis is a bone forming process so don't you think that it will lead to some sort of a bone formation all around yes don't you think that this is the neural canal yes don't you think that from which the spinal cord has to pass yes don't you think that all these osteophytes and all these things will you know encroach the spinal canal and reduce the diameter thereby you know uh, increasing the problem yes apart from that this pars interarticularis because of the osteoarthritis don't you think it will become unstable yes so my student my dear student degenerative type is the most common type the most common level for degenerative type is l4 l5 the interesting point is that with senility with aging there has to happen what degenerative arthritis so there has to be degenerative arthritis at l4 l5 now this leads to facet joint this leads to facet joint arthropathy and this facet joint arthropathy is leading to an unstable l4 l5 and that is the reason for a slip and the most interesting point is that usually the slip will have mild symptoms mild symptoms of you know pain tenderness inability to walk all these symptoms will be mild are we able to understand my point after degenerative the last one that we have is i'm sure you can read it pathological why do we use the word pathological <clears throat> see you have to understand we use the word pathological whenever there's a pathology in the underlying bone i'll give you an example maybe that can help you a professor a senior professor of mine she passed away 3 years ago she was a case of c breast stage 4 and a plastic with bony mats so she had a secondary in the pedicle of l4 that was the reason why l4 
pedicle got lysed. It got destroyed because of that secondary. It was a lytic secondary. And gradually L4, L5 became weak. And gradually she developed lysthesis. So what I'm trying to tell you is that there is a bony pathology. What I'm trying to tell you is that there is a bony pathology. It is usually a primary or a secondary neoplastic process. I'm not saying it cannot be infection. I'm not saying it cannot be any other disease. It can be anything, guys. It can be any damn thing. It can be infection. It can be anything. But usually it's a neoplastic process which leads to disruption of pars inter articularis. Are we able to understand this? So this is something that I feel that you all should remember. Okay. Now, symptoms, I have already described most of them here. That in majority of the cases, we have pain, we have tenderness, we have inability to walk. And you know, all those things that you are already aware of. Okay. Now, the next thing that I want all of to, all of you to know is that when we talk about diagnosis, in diagnosis, the classical thing which is important is X-ray of the LS spine. Now, whenever we prescribe an X-ray of the LS spine, we have been taught like this and I have a habit that the first thing that I would say that I want an X-ray in the lateral view, that to inflection and extension. So, I want, I want a lateral view. But the person should first bend down, then he should bend, uh, he should bend down forward, then he should bend backwards. Why I ask this view? Because this can see, with this you can see the dynamic mobility of the segment. I mean, just imagine, just imagine that, you know, there's a slippage. So with this, you can see, with this, you can see the dynamicity of the slip. There are certain slips I have seen in my life. There are certain slips. The moment you flex, the moment you flex your spine, the slip disappears. And with extension, the slip exaggerates. So I get an idea that how much mobility in the segment is there if I will plan a surgery. Then I ask for an AP view. In the AP view, you see a very important, interesting thing that is called as inverted Napoleon hat sign. Then you ask for an oblique view certainly in that oblique view again you see something which is very interesting radiology question b headed scotty terrier dog sign but apart from that there is one more thing which is very important here is which is what is called as mayor dings classification why i am saying mayor dings classification because it is a mayor dings classification with which you are going to operate that person and don't worry i'll make it simple for you <clears throat> let us say for example this is l5 and let us say for example let us say for example this is s1 this is s1 now what i'm trying to tell you is you have to listen to this you have to first delineate, okay. You have to first delineate the superior border of the inferior vertebral body. So, S1 is the inferior vertebral body? Yes. This is the superior border between these two red dots. Yes or no? Yes. Now, what they ask you is that draw a line connecting the two. Draw a line connecting the two. Now, you have to divide this into four equal parts. Let us say, for example, one, two, three. One, two, three. You have divided this into four equal parts. Now, every single part will contribute to 25% of the lysis. Are you able to get my point? Every single part will contribute to 25% of the lysis. Okay? Every single part will contribute to 25% of the lysis. So, if I say this as 1, this as 2, this as 3, this as 4. Now, it all depends upon what is the level of slippage. Let's say, for example, you have to draw a line along the 
okay you use another color you have to draw a line along the posterior margin of the superior vertebral body so here you go and you draw a line and it falls exactly here so technically technically how much is the less this is 25 percent 25 percent and probably half of it so it is 50 plus 12.5 so almost 62.5 percent less this is. are we able to understand my point are you all able to understand what i'm trying to tell you here so you have four groups of listesses according to the Meerdings classification 0 to 25 percent is category 1 26 to 49 percent or rather 50 percent is category 2 51 to 75 percent is category 3 uh, more than 75 percent is category 4 now these are treated conservatively when i say conservative treatment that means exercises that means muscle strengthening that means lumbar belt when i say this part that is essentially surgery and what is that surgery we do a particular screw fixation which is called as pedicle screw fixation in the ini ct that happened this year this was asked as a question that in spine it was asked as a question that in spine when you do any instrumentation or when you do any surgery then you have to put a screw then where do you put that screw so you put that screw into the pedicle because that is the most important part that is the strongest part of the spine which will give the maximum purchase hold puckered power to the spine so category one category two conservative category three category four surgery now listen to me listen to me there's a catch what is that catch that not always surgery if somebody has got a 60 percent let's say oh chalo, chalo, let's open Nahi. surgery for surgery listen to me for surgery you should have category three or category four listhesis but along with that you have to have a refractory pain or you have to have a progressive neurological deficit. You have to have a progressive neurological deficit. Just by... This is something that I've been not telling only to you as student, but I, I tell this to patients also. I'm an orthopedic surgeon. Yes. Should I treat patients? Yes. Should I treat their x-rays? No. X-ray ka thode na If x-ray shows... 60% list this is that not that does not mean essentially always that every person with 60% list this is need surgery so we ask the person tu bata bhi. person says sir pain is there i am not able to follow my daily ordinary activities of my life sir i need surgery chalo bhai theek hai x ray clinical correlation operate or if the patient says, you know, my ankle dorsiflexion is becoming weak or my EHL is being weak or blah, blah is happening or paraparesis is happening. Okay, okay, we will operate. <coughs> Surgery, pedicle screw, fixation. Is that topic clear to all of you?